Well, welcome. How are you? Good. You're good. What a fantastic Sunday to be in church. Sunday in Sundays in Tasmania. I don't understand why the church is not more full because who'd be outside right now? What kind of moron? No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's going to be one of those mornings. I've I've got a bit of sass in me this morning. So uh, when it comes to when it comes to talking about mission, when it comes to talking about the, the, again, I keep using this word, opulence that God has placed inside of us, both our truth and our treasure. There's something that riles me up when we actually see, uh, you know, people walking down the streets of, the, of our world so overflowing and yet so hesitant to, to, sow, to do the sowing. Amen. Something, something fires up inside of me. I, I, get, a, I get a little antsy. So uh, I'm just going to smile. Say I love you. We have been, I think, I was just trying to think earlier, I think this is the 17th or 18th uh, Mission Sunday where we, we take up our, our offering together. There's, there was offerings given last week, there'll be gifts given over the coming months, but this is the 18th time I've had the honour of standing here with y'all and actually, hopefully, plundering you for cash for the kingdom cause. And it's not something that I take lightly. Honestly, in my heart and my spirit, I feel, the, I feel the magnitude of it. I understand because we're real people like you. We've had five kids and they're all going to have braces. Thank you, Jesus. You're a miracle working God. Do you know how much flopping money that is? And yet God has got us through. We understand what it is to pay the same electricity rates that you do and our car registration comes around just as fast as your does. And we like to eat nice things. We like cheese. <laughs> all right. We feel entitled that we should. Oh, I haven't been to the movies for ages. We do the same. We live the same life as you. So I feel, I feel the magnitude of the ask. But I sense God saying, don't shrink back. Hebrews 10 says, we, are not, we don't belong to those who shrink back. And why should we allow Sony or McDonald's or Apple or Village Cinemas or Nike to ask you for your hard-earned dollar when we can't ask it on behalf of a little boy and girl living in India or Nepal or in some country that you will never go to see, some village that you will never see or smell, to actually ask you to do something, give something sacrificial in their name, for his name's sake. For that, for what we do for the least of those, we do unto him. Come on. Oh, if Jesus was here, he'd get a free coffee and a seat at the front and Jesus would get everything and get my absolute attention, he'd get my absolute devotion. I'd fawn upon him, I'd sit at his feet, I'd listen to every word he says, but he said, what you do to the least of these, you do unto me. Jesus walked in here wet and cold with no shoes on. Oh, Jesus, take my jacket, here's my shoes. Have everything I've got, Jesus. Jesus. For the least of these, for the little, for the left out, those you will never see, never know. They'll never thank you. So it's with an audaciousness, but it's with a, a, a seriousness that we really do come into this time of giving. It's so important that you understand, Karen, in my heart and the heart of all the leaders here, and when I say all the leaders here, this is a leadership gathering, right? I've been saying this for years. We don't see you as being the congregation. We don't see you as being the sheep. You are the shepherds. You lead your homes, you lead your workplaces, you lead your sports clubs, you lead your other places of engagement. You, this is a leadership meeting, all. Right. Yeah? Right. So we, when we say that our heart for you as leaders is we want more for you than we want from you. We don't want more from you. We want it for you. We want the freedom, we want the hope, we want the power, we want the joy, we want the peace, we want the challenge for you. It's what we want for you, not from you. What we give today is not a measure of who I am as a person or as a pastor. I'm saying that for me, not for you. How we respond to altar calls is not a measure of me, it's a measure of our hunger. And I want hunger for you. Oh, you want me to be hungry? Absolutely. I want you to be starving for the presence and the face of Jesus. I want that to be the mark and the measure of everything that we do. The times that I, I look back on in my life that are, the, uh, that are the greatest are my darkest because that's when I had to cleave to Jesus. I had to hold on to him. 
Not the moments of the mountain tops when there's 6,000, 7,000, 6,000 people in evangelism there, 6,000 people on an oval or things are going great or there's more than them. We know what to do with no one's on those hard days. They're our greatest when we feel betrayed, when we feel left out, when we feel insecure, when I just cannot tell you if my left foot is going to hit the ground after the right foot. And I want that for you. How unkind of me. But I've been there, I know what it's like. It's a whole bunch of me which is there right now. I'm in the in the time of undoing, of renovation. And I would say that it sucks, but I've actually seen enough of what twenty-five of years of walking with the Lord looks like to know that in this undoing there is a great doing. And it's uncomfortable. And like I said, I'm acting like a tired three year old at home, throwing myself on the floor. But we're going to turn the world upside down. Can we have that first slide up, please, Dennis? In fact, we actually better run to the second slide. This is where we've been. We've been talking about a good life, living content in a culture of more simplicity, money, stuff, time, and how good was Pastor Jack last week. If you didn't see Pastor Jack last week, uh, I'm so sorry for you, but you can go back and watch it on, online. I can still quote his message. There aren't many messages over the years that you can actually quote all seven of his points just straight off the bat. And it was unbelievable. And here we are today in missions, hashtag two. Uh, and um, so in just a second, what I want to do is I would like to, I'm going to call our missions team up just a second. Um, and we're going to let you know uh, a, little, a little bit about the, the mission partners that you are going to give to. We're going to let you know where you're giving and then hopefully I can actually give us a little bit of why we give and then how we give. Um, and so we're going to do that. But I just want you to know that this is, this is part of our spiritual formation. We are actually looking to cultivate, to be apprenticed in something that is different from yesterday. So we are more Christ-like in our attitudes, in our thinking, in our stuff with our time, with our words, with our relationships than we were last year, than we were last week. This is about spiritual formation. We come here, it's like a gym workout, so we can actually go and lift more weights out there. The object of the gym is not just so I can do it in the gym, but so I can actually go and do it in real life situations. So this is all part of our spiritual formation and it flows out of our mission statement or of our purpose statement, I should say, which is this, please, Dennis. In Jesus, we bring help and hope, passionately expressing love for all that turns the world upside down. In Jesus, not in our own strength, not in what you have, not in our collective gathering, not in the fact that we're in a nice warm building. In Jesus, not because you drive a nice car or you've got a job or you've got a fantastic husband or wife, but in Jesus. This is our starting point. We bring, we as a collective, this is not a one out. I love the fact that this is a church who serves. I love the fact that this is a church who gives and we give way above our size. Was, we were talking to pastors Jack and Carol last week. And we, they are a church who give over a million dollars a year. And when they actually, they actually, I told them a little bit about our missions giving, they go, you give greater than we do. Per head, per capita, for the size of the church, you guys give. Thank you. We're going to do it again. But thank you. You are amazing. But that is because it's a collective. We bring, we physically do something. Our virtue signaling or our Facebook posts, no, that is just not going to cut it. I was greatly dismayed by the Olympic opening ceremony where they mocked our Christian faith by doing a drag, drag queen last supper rendition to open the Olympics with. How disgusting. As if they do that to any other religion on the planet. That the one time which is intended to unite the globe, they use it as an opportunity to spit in the face of Christian faith. I was disgusted and I was angry. So I ran straight to Facebook and I typed something up. <laughs> no. What does that do? What does that achieve? Do I right, shake my fist at our family dinner last night? Close, but I didn't. No, because all of our virtual signal, it doesn't matter what flag you drape over your digital shoulders. It doesn't matter what you put onto a t-shirt. Jesus is not impressed and the devil ain't worried. So what do we do in this face of this Olympics or every other form of injustice, 
and, and inequality and evil perpetrated on, on innocent and beautiful people when they, their gifts are squandered or their bodies are, are trashed and ruined. What do we do? Go to Facebook, virtue signal, wail and weep. Jesus is not impressed. The devil isn't worried. But when we get together, when we pray, when we believe that even in the midst of the, and even in, in the darkness of this pit, there is still a promise for God's people and a promise that comes from God's people. And so we gather together and we pray and we sing, how beautiful is your name? And then we actually do something. We give, we go, we engage with this world, not shaking our fists at the world and somehow think they're going to come running to us. But we actually get to love them and, we, and what, what we can't do, we empower others to do. So if you've gone and put something on your Facebook page this week, don't think I'm hacking on you. I just think there's something better. I just think there's something which is actually going to achieve something than just talking at dinner parties with people that we know will like us regardless of what we say. The amount of times I've actually had to stay silent in those times because, you know what, I'm just, I'm just either picking fights or I'm talking about low-hanging stuff. When there is a, we're there, I want open relationships so that my family, my friends, or the people that I get to do journey with, actually are not going to come to me and go, oh, how about those Olympics? Because that's not the point. What's the bigger conversation? Right. Who are you in Jesus? Because what have he's done? That's the conversation I want to have with my family. That's the conversation I want to have with my friends. Not about how bad the world is can have that here, but those, I want to have those conversations. So we bring, we bring help and hope. Passionately expressing. Not with an apathy, not with a beige, not with a, a complacency, not with a sense of somebody else will do it for me. No, we bring, and we bring it passionately. We bring it wholeheartedly. We bring it, we bring it with a conviction, and we bring it with a joy. Yeah. We bring it. We bring it. Help and hope, passionately expressing love. Love which keeps no records of wrong. Standing there going, Father, I'm just so angry about this Olympic stuff. And he said, hey, it's not, it's not the French people. It's not the French nation, you know. I went, I was taken back because I was angry with France. <laughs> you laugh at me, but I think that was a pretty stupid thing, right? But it's, it's love, love that keeps no record of wrongs. It's not easily angered. Hello. Yes doesn't judge, that embraces and loves, that lifts up, that believes the best and speaks the best. Love, we want to passionately express love for who? For everybody, for all. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ for everyone, everywhere, that turns the world upside down. Or from our perspective, maybe, maybe it turns the world up the right way. We're not upside down. We're not subverting the word. We're actually turning it back to the way it should be, the way that Jesus created it to be. The, the possibilities, the potential, the promises that he died to release. We're turning it into that space. Yeah. So, how does that happen? Well, it says, start in me, Lord. Send me, I'll go, and I'll go as part of a team. So why does the team come and join me? Where's our mission team? Come on, come on huddle up, crew. They're wrapped about this, by the way. They're just so happy that they get to come and do this. But no, seriously, this is our, this is our team uh, who is just coming. That's it. Aren't they good looking? I was going to make them stand on stools and stuff, but uh, stand on stools. I should have done that. Yeah, yeah. But what we want to do is in, in your booklet, you'll actually see, and it's so beautifully put together. Cat Smith, thank you so much for this. You did a great job. But you'll actually see a whole bunch of stuff in here. You'll see that there's global partners and local partners, and we also have got an incredibly, uh, I think, important arm, which is justice and advocacy, where we actually add our voice to the voices which are being stolen from the world. And what I'd like to do really quickly, and they'll be on the screen behind me, if you want to go through these partners, and I'm going to ask each and one of these guys to pray. Uh, Sam, can they use your mic? Is that, can they use that, your mic to pray? Alex, are you right with that one there? Awesome in this place. So our, our, first, our first partner is a global partner. It's free to be. Uh, it exists to support children and family who are at deep risk. 
It, I, we operate in a, the city of Calcutta, which is over 15 million people. The city itself is four and a half. West Bengal is the province, over 15 million people, the third highest populated uh, region in India. If you want any indication, a little bit of how Calcutta rolls, smells, thinks, there is over a thousand kilometres of open drains and sewers in Calcutta. I actually, I actually looked at that. That's a, an open sewer that runs from Hobart to Launceston five times. And the hope and the beauty and the goodness. And there is, there is a fragrance there, I can promise you. But when you get around the meal tables and you, look, and, you, and you get into some of these gatherings with these incredible women who do the most insane, make these insanely beautiful good lives with their children with absolutely nothing, there is a fragrance there, which actually, which I go, maybe it's me who smells. Because I see what's going on there. We've been there for 15 years. There's tailoring centre. We're tailoring tuition, computer literacy programs. We're actually working in six different slums with a, with a nutrition program, an education program, helping build bridges from, from kids who will never, ever enter into the schooling system because their own parents are illiterate and can't actually fill in the forms for them. We're actually building those bridges. We'd love you to come back next year in March. Uh, again, it is just one of those works that we ask you to come and see so that you'll come back here and die. Mm. Yeah. Understand me? You'll come and see what is going on there. So you'll come back here and give and give thanks and tell stories and pray like you've never prayed before. I remember being in the back of a duk duk with Aaron Bienefeld, one of the craziest nights of my entire life. <laughs> and I'll never forget it because we do all this stuff and we have an awful lot of fun as well. And we help these families and these kids have fun. So who's praying for that? Is that you, Pastor Sam? What a, what a stylish guy. <laughs> great, great minds think alike. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for the great work that you are doing in India. For the compassion and the empathy that uh, you get to allow us to grow in, Father that you actually would give us the opportunity to partake in what revival or, and the move of God could look like in that country. Lord, I thank you uh, for every single volunteer and free to be, uh, for the mentors, the helpers, the ones who risk their lives to, to help a people, Jesus, who no one else will. And I thank you for the way that you have a purpose, identity, and future over every single uh, person, young child, and woman that uh, free to be is interacting with and and empowering Jesus. And again, I thank you, God, that you give us the opportunity to partner with this amazing organization to see you move in Calcutta and India. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Great prayer, Sam. It was wonderful to have you there last year as well. Uh, our, next, our next local partner is Christian Surfers, and we absolutely adore these guys. You know, they're in, they're in over 33 different countries. There's uh, well over 400, no, sorry, 175. That was, again, I'm, I'm just <laughs> fully evangelistic here this morning. 175 different programs throughout the world with over 1,000 volunteer leaders. That's pretty impressive, right? And that just, that's just that's globally. Here in Tassie, we have got a significant part of our family that operates uh, locally here and then we're really excited to see what's going to happen in Indonesia to the phenomenal work of Leitch and Rach and Lance and the, and the Cooper family. But their heartbeat is that they see every surfer uh, coming to know Jesus. They want to hear about the good news of Jesus and uh, we, we love that. This um, surfing community is a bit of a closed community. I think they like it that way. I think they like being a little bit subversive, like fully froth and sick, wicked, woo! And you go, I just, I can't talk to you. I don't know what you're saying. Um, so uh, because I don't have dreadlocks, it's a closed community. But, but we've got some agents on the inside and we've got some guys who, that is their tribe and they do speak frothing and they do speak wicked and they do smell like surf wax and we love to be able to see what they can do on our beaches because I can't go there. I'm just... I'm just old and crusty. I'm boring. Um, but we've got these guys out there. So who's praying for them? Is that, that's Kate. You got a Thank you. Yeah, so we've got, um, we've always got Brad and Alex who are the state <coughs> directors, state directors, I think, coordinators. Yep. And then we've got Josh and Lucy who are the local um, church um, connections here from this church who run the Hobart base. There's also bases throughout Tassie, but this church um, mostly in the past has supported the local um, Hobart-based mission here, which has um, a whole range of um, team members from this church and other churches throughout Hobart. So, um, and then we've also obviously got Lance and Rach as well, who are stepping into new stuff. So, 
Let's lift them up, hey? Yes, Lord, thank you. We lift up Christian surfers to you this morning. Thank you for their servant hearts to see every surfer have the opportunity to know and follow Jesus. And God, we pray for Brad and Alex as they navigate their current season. Lord, may you give them strength and comfort and wisdom to know how to move forward, Lord, um, in this season of life that they're in. Lord, may you protect them. We pray for more missions throughout Tasmania to be born and grow strong. We pray that you prepare the communities where CS may begin, that their hearts are ready, Lord. May you just um, explode it across Tasmania, Lord, in, in so many areas and communities, God. We lift up Josh and Lucy to you, Father. Thank you that they serve with such dedication and passion. We pray that you guide and lead them with the projects and the initiatives in this local community, Lord, that we will see open doors to see people come into the kingdom. Lord, may you grant the entire CS team in Hobart with the boldness to share their faith in authentic and relational ways, Lord. And may the seeds that are sown produce fruit time and time again. And God, for Lance and Rach, as they step into this new role as regional coordinators in Indonesia, God, bless this season. For the relationships that are building and growing, bless them. Let them produce fruit and ideas and visions about the future. Protect their family as they travel to explore these relationships and get their boots on the ground. Put a fire in their bellies for the people of Indonesia and those that travel there. Equip them with the boldness for sharing the gospel and their testimonies of your goodness in their lives. And God, protect them as people of faith in a predominantly Muslim country. God, keep them safe as you lead them into unknown places with unknown people and unknown consequences. God, you are our provider and our protector. And we thank you for these servants, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want to know more about Christian surfers, all the stuff is in um, the, the booklet here and go and talk to those guys. We are so phenomenally proud of them and we love your great prayer. Uh, the next one is Operation Christmas Child and we have got um, Terry Hampson who has just been such a long-term um, partner in that and uh, provocateur to, and continuing to say give these shoe boxes and, and open this space up but you'll see the stats there Ele- over 11 million children last year received a gift that actually had a gospel tract in it three um, and a half million uh, were invited into the greatest journey which is 12 bible studies uh, guiding them through what it actually means to be a Christian so it's not just toys and soap and toothbrushes and writing stuff it's actually the good news of Jesus and um, some ongoing connection in those villages and in those remote areas that is going to not just say, hey, there's Jesus, goodbye, but hey, there's Jesus, this is how you can know him, follow him and share him. That's pretty good. And out of that, two and a half million, over two and a half million children made decisions to follow Jesus. That's, that's two and a half million faces. That's two and a half million families. That's two and a half million villages that are going to be impacted by these kids. Maybe not two and a half million villages, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and it, the, each of these shoe boxes has a story uh, attached that we get to unlock. We're so uh, proud of the work that Operation Christmas Child does. Terry, we, we love you. We're excited to be part of that again this year. Um, uh, Loz, are you praying for that? Would you pray for that for us? Thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the work of Operation Christmas Child. I thank you for the work of Terry and his team down here in the distribution center, Lord. I thank you for our Life Kids team and children who partner with this initiative, Lord, to bring joy and hope and a gospel message to children everywhere, Lord God. And so we pray over that team right now across the globe as they're preparing for this year's initiative, Lord. I pray that for those that are delivering, Lord, that they would find favour into the countries and the villages and the neighbourhoods that need so desperately to hear this message of truth and hope and life, Lord. I thank you for your provision and I pray over it, Lord God, as, as people bring their donations, Lord, move us to action. When this initiative comes, Lord, may we be moved to action. We wouldn't be so distracted with accumulating more stuff for ourselves, Lord God, at Christmas time, that we would forget the needs of these children everywhere who don't have access to hygiene products, Lord God, who don't have access to basic resources, Lord Jesus, to go to school with. I thank you for the opportunity to give and go and partner with this amazing organisation and uh, thank you, Lord God, for your message of truth and hope and life, Lord God. We thank you that this isn't just an opportunity to give toys, Lord. It's an opportunity to give you the ultimate gift. 
What a joy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Laura. So you'll see that, again, we've got these giving cards. They should be on your chairs. You can, you'll get one later. And so some of our giving is actually through your financial donations. We need them. Uh, we actually are able to use some of your money going towards this. But then there's also the practical opportunity of you being able to pick up shoe boxes and actually fill those as families. And we get to do that with our kids. One of the most important things, I believe, what we do here at Abundant is we've got generational giving. It's not just for two income families we actually want that from our youth we want that from our children operations christmas child is a fantastic space to be able to do that um we uh i I shudder under this next one this next one is this next one is the one that hurts and hits me the hardest i i'm i'm wrestling uh, as to how to know how to approach this personally uh and so at the moment i know that uh, that we're not in a position to do, but we're going to give to the phenomenal work of fostering hope. Um, you'll see some stats up there that says we've got 1,200 children uh, who are out of home care. Across the nation, 46,000 young people are not safe in their homes and require help. That's huge. Um, you'll see the next stats there is you've got 1700 is the increase in children entering care each year the deficit is we've actually got 1400 new carers but there's 1500 leaving so we're actually going backward we're going up in our kids and down in our carers and i'm just going to read this um poem there for us uh we are guilty of many errors and many faults but our worst crime is abandoning the children neglecting the fountain of life Many things can wait, children cannot. Right now their bones are being formed, their blood is being made, and their senses are being developed. To them we cannot answer tomorrow because their name is today. And uh, I just know that this is going to be an area of greater focus for us as a church. Uh, We want to encourage you, if you want to know more about either the mentoring programs, the prayer opportunities, or indeed the fostering support that you can offer uh, Mary um, Blake and her team um, through that. We want to do that. We've got um, a member of the board, uh, being Hammy, who is uh, such a beautiful part of our family. So we have some, we really do have some direct line of sight into how truly incredible this work is. Uh, Hammy, we're proud of you. Um, do you want to pray for, for your team and for our, our part of our family with uh, Fostering Hope? Dear Lord, children in care often come from broken families, broken relationships. But thank you, Father, that through the work of fostering hope, we as the church get a chance to heal the brokenness. Through their mentorship program, Lord, we raise disciples of you. Through their trauma awareness program, we get aside these children. It said it takes the village to rise a child. Thank you for making us that village, Lord. Thank you, Father, that through us, new generation will be blessed. Cycles of poverty and defeat will be broken. And mountains of hope are being risen in Tasmania, Lord. Amen. Beautiful. Yeah, let's let's keep sowing into this area. Our next one is Youth Alive, and uh, we adore the work of Youth Alive. We've been supporting this work now for, you know, nearly 20 years or more. We understand its power. We understand what it's actually doing and changing the lives of young people. It's actually said that the the work we do in young people before the age of 21 is salvation, after 21 is salvage. The importance of reaching the next generation of Tasmanians, which Sam and his incredible team do uh, right across our state, is absolutely essential and we want to be able to put volunteers into Sam's organization and money into the pockets so that they can actually go and preach the gospel and do these incredible things reach the lost raise leaders resource local youth ministries um Jossie Chaco in his book madness if you haven't read that book it's a fantastic book but he says this and I, I want to reference it Uh, from a global space to a local space it says putting resources into the hands of transformational leaders is always uh, always gives a greater return on investment it can change a family a community and even a whole nation 
putting resources into the hands of transformational leaders, and that's what Youth Alive does. Um, Sam, we should be praying for you. We do. You've got a main event coming up. There'll be lots in around that, but would you like to take a minute and pray for Youth Alive, brother? Dear Jesus, we take this time to thank you for the movement that is Youth Alive, the movement that has supported a vision that is supported by so many uh, young people, young adults, leaders and pastors, Father, to intercede for a generation and to reach a generation for your name. And Lord, I pray out of the work of Youth Alive that young people who are lost and in darkness and struggling would be able to find you through the gospel, that leaders would be raised up and resourced and equipped and empowered to go into every sphere of business, of church, of ministry, of political life. God, I pray that you would resource youth ministries, that you would revive a generation right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the work you are doing. Amen. Awesome. We cannot wait to hear great reports out of the uh, August main event down here. Pastor Sam. Um, compassion. Uh, again, some stats on the screen. Uh, the links are in your booklet. QR codes will lead you there. But uh, we as a church sponsor over 200 uh, young people uh, in nations across the globe. That is amazing. that is amazing church. That is absolutely amazing. Uh, and each of those children has brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers. Uh, I've stood in their homes. I've seen the impact uh, that your giving makes to your sponsored children. I've actually visited, I had the privilege of visiting many of them, taking your photos, taking little videos of you, saying thank you to them. Uh, they are absolutely blown away. They treasure your letters. They treasure your pictures. If you sponsor kids, can I encourage you? Thank you for your cash. Uh, but write the letters. It is so easy to write online it is having a global impact um, like no other and who's praying for that that would be the amazing ben yeah. come on ben pray for us father i thank you for the opportunity we have to give to compassion but we ask that you speak to us about our giving father but soften our hearts let us give joyfully graciously father to these children and um, from, from research, Father, I've, I've found that through our giving, we can help open school programs, help education, help mums and babies, help children hear the gospel and be blessed in your name. And Father, um, we know that you love children, Father, and we believe that if we resource them, Father, they can grow up in your name and change the world from Indonesia, from Asia, Father. But speak to us, help us give finance practically father to these children in indonesia and wherever else help us sponsor kids father help us write letters and show them our heart and show them your heart for them father we thank you amen amen thank you ben we're looking forward to having a, a, a compassion focused sunday uh in the months coming up and you'll have another opportunity again to sponsor and we've got our choir at the back there. They just, they're just saying, sing, our children are singing over us this morning, saying, sponsor children, sponsor children. Um, we, we love working globally. We feel it, we, and we not we feel, we know it's really important to be able to work globally as well. And uh, so we have a local church arm. Uh, it's our next slide, please, Dennis. Isn't he doing a fantastic job? Uh, where we, we have connection opportunities. We work with our schools, there's outreach events, practical and crisis care, family support, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it's for people that you will know and where it's a joy to be able to resource you, to love them. Other people, it's just absolute walk-ups or phone-ins that, that we will, again, never know, but are living locally and doing it hard, that, that just need someone to say, we, we can't solve the problem, but we can stand with you in it. We, we can't turn back the tide of some bad decisions or, or some, some of life's hard knocks, but we can actually provide some practical resource and some relationship, some warmth and some care and a non-judgmental uh, posture towards them. You make that possible. And so uh, we've got Karen who's going to pray for that. Um, and that is just so multifaceted that uh, it's, it's quite incredible when we get to see that just popping out of the blue here and there. So Karen, thank you. Thank you, God, for designing the local church where we can love and care for each other and the community around us. Thank you that we can be part of this very generous church here at Abundant. Lord, we ask that you bless the efforts of all those involved in caring for both the families in our local church and our local community. 
We ask for a protection on all the leaders and volunteers involved in community care and our programs. May the practical, emotional and spiritual care offered to those in need be guided by your love and a desire to bring your hope and healing to those who are facing a crisis and challenging times. We ask that through the outreach programs such as the Kids Connect and the Youth Basketball Afternoons, that many young people will be able to experience a real connection to you through the love and care given. But ultimately, God, we ask that they will be drawn into a relationship with you through what we do, Father. Guide us to recognise the dignity and the worth of every person we encounter and to be your hands and feet as well as your heart to all those we care for in our church and our local community. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Beautiful, Karen. Thank you. Our next slide says that we've got sort of our focus areas there. We build communities. We impact generations. You've been hearing a lot about that. Again, uh, the booklet will continue to lead you and guide you in certain areas. Uh, I was joking with Laura. She said, you're not going to say this. I absolutely am going to say it. If you've actually looked at a football schools on your phone if you've ordered a pizza if you've actually found a pair of jeans on sale at some online store your thumbs work uh, and so therefore you can actually find the information about these places simply by picking up this magic little glowing black box and it will tell you how to pray how to give how to get involved uh, and so please don't just wait for once a month or oh, i don't know what's going on with my visions no one's told us anything so uh, but one of the things that we really do love, and Lockie's been so excited to be in, <laughs> is actually our justice and advocacy. And I'm so grateful uh, that we have actually got a church that says, listen, yes, we love giving, we love doing, but we, how do we uh, add our voice to the voices which are being stolen in our land? How do we do this for our refugees? How do we do this in places of domestic violence, which is the greatest epidemic our country has seen in many, many years? It is a scourge and it's a blight on our freedom and, and our, actually our, our um, national identity, to be quite frank. Uh, how do we stand in and give voice to or educate ourselves, uh, stand with, I think is the, is, the, is the key issue, isn't it, Kate? For the voices that are there, but they're unseen, they're unheard, or they're just being swamped. We are going to continue to call us into spaces of engagement, call us into spaces of letter writing, call us into spaces where we can get better informed so that you can be the hands and feet into places where there are some of these issues and some of these opportunities to be loved. And uh, so we, we really believe that this is a, an essential arm for our mission's heart and our mission's priority as a, as a church. Um, Lockie, would you pray in that space for us? Lord Jesus, thank you that you are a God who hears our prayers. Um, thank you that this church is generous and that we give and that we care. But Lord, we lament and we are saddened by how much bad stuff's happening across the globe. Um, there are issues and tra traumas and sadness that is beyond our imagination. It's beyond what we see in the news. Um, it's beyond what we see in the street. And we ask that you lead us, God, to be a church that cares about justice and advocacy, that we can have a voice for those who are unheard, that we can care about the people who are not seen, Lord. We thank you that, God, you do see them. We just ask that we can be a conduit that helps the rest of the world catch up with the way that you see everyone, God. Thank you that you give us love and that we love because you loved us first. And we just ask that you touch our hearts and help us to have breakthrough this year in this space. We lift this up in your name, Lord. Amen. So these guys and girls are going to be uh, helping us to understand uh, what missions looks like over the next 12 months. We'll be taking some really specific times on, on regular Sundays to give you updates as to where your money's going, some of the testimonies and stories, and indeed how you can keep praying and, and keep being engaged. I, we've had a couple of meetings that have been incredible. Um, so why don't you give these guys a round of applause? <laughs> Danke, danke. Okay, and so watch the pastor pull another 45-minute message down to four minutes. Um, 
Uh, Dennis, we're gonna, I'm going to make you work really hard right now. Is that okay? We're going to go to slide 14. 14 of 987. Just mess. Freedom from freedom for. Slide 14. There we go. Outstanding. In the West, we somehow think that our freedoms is I can do whatever I want whenever I want. And that's absolutely, that is not how Scripture records it. Scripture does not say you are free to do anything I want. In fact, if you actually want to open, and I'm, hopefully this book isn't in your home, but the Satanic Bible opens with the line, do as thou wilt, do whatever you want. That's the whole of the law. And so, so often in our world with the, our perceived freedoms, we go, I can do whatever I want. All things are possible. I can, I can, I can do anything. Through Christ who strengthens me. No, he says, I want you to commit. I want you to stand firm. I don't want you to re-engage with the slavery. Now, I understand that this actual text, Paul is talking about the law and actually being circumcised and a whole bunch of other bits and pieces in there. But the truth here is actually that we actually get to come into a space where we are not going to be yoked, where we are not going to be burdened, where we are not going to be enslaved by our money or by our limitations or by a sense of, I will do what I can do, as opposed to, I will do what he asks me to do. This freedom, we have been freed from the wages of sin, which is death. We have been freed from a world which is tossed backwards and forwards like, like a cork on a, on a wind-tossed sea. We actually have an anchor point. His name is Jesus. We have a truth. It's found in scripture we have a spirit which comes and lives inside of us and he calls us his church his bride to gather together to lift ourselves up and to encourage one another when we can't honestly do it ourselves we've been freed from these spaces and we have been freed for a purpose not to live for ourselves not just to do whatever we want however we want but to make a sacrifice to live for something greater than what i can get out of this life to live for something which is uncomfortable when the whole world says, be comfortable, do less, create more margin, create more margin. Now, I am personally working and wrestling with the concept of being able to live a more simple and slow life that actually does have margin and I'm not just running from, from next thing to next thing. I don't think I'm doing so great, but I'm starting where I am and I'm moving forward. But I also don't want to create so much margin that I end up ultimately just living for my own self. We've been freed from something. We've been, been freed for something. And the next slide says, from that revelation, we give, we go, and we engage. We give, we invite you to come with us onto missions trips. We invite you to come with us and volunteer in places like Youth Alive. We invite you to be part of our Christmas offerings to our community, both with some of the events that we run and the, and the help and the, 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 the help that we actually offer to be part of our, our kids or our youth ministries in a myriad of different ways. You can go into these spaces. I'm going to ask the team to come back and join me. And you can engage in these volunteer, in these, sorry, these advocacy spaces that Lockie so beautifully prayed into, where we can educate ourselves, where we can write letters, where we can, we can grow in our understanding of how our prayers can be more pointed and more powerful and not just crying out, oh God, oh God, we can actually pray that the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead lives in me and my words can, build, you know, can tear down walls, my words can create worlds and I want to pray like that. Are we all okay? The team's got an item prepared. And to be honest, church, Karen and I have been praying into this and, and I, I still don't know what I'm writing on this card yet. If you know, great, there's a basket up here. We're going to ask you to come and give. Laura's got some pens. This is our collective moment to do this. I'm going to put a card in. Because I am determined that as for me and my house, we are going to do something great, full of faith for others. That the people who simply are so locked in their lies or their brokenness, be it poverty of body, 
poverty of lack of education, choices. They can't make these choices for themselves. I can't do everything, but I can do something. And I want to do something great. I'm just not comfortable with where I am right now, with my joyful giving, with my peaceful giving. And I just know that there's something else for Karen and I in this space. So we're going to rest in that. I'm not trying to manipulate you. I'm not trying to coerce you. I'm trying to put courage into you. I love the story of the woman that Jesus, and Jesus sat down outside the temple and he watched people giving their offerings. Not so he could condemn them, not so he could compare them, but he could actually see, I, I love that area of faith. I can feel that. I love that area of obedience. I can feel that. If you just want a pen or a booklet, can you just raise your hand and Laura and uh, people hand those out. There's one down here, Lozzie. Two copper coins. A couple of cents. Sharing with Pastor Jack last week, I said, I don't care if our church raises $500,000 this year. That's not the goal. The goal is not how much can we actually give. The goal is that everyone gives. My goal is not a million. My goal is 100%. 100% from our youth to our kids, to those who are just entering the workforce, those who are just starting families or those who are leaving it, those who are now empty nesters, 100%. Jesus doesn't care if it's a couple of cents tens of thousands of dollars he cares about our obedience Jesus instructed us as a church to go into all the world and he then said teach them to obey everything that I've instructed you in sometimes we teach you what Jesus said today we're teaching you to obey what he said give generously to those who have not heard this good news of Jesus Christ his love his grace we don't just want to talk about missions we invite you into it so whether or not you want to go and put your card into the basket at the front you'd like to drop it in the box at the back you would like to do it online all those options are there we're not looking for a public demonstration that we can applaud you or ourselves at our success. We're asking for your obedience. We're asking for your love. We're asking that 100% of people will participate. We understand 100% of our church is not in the room this morning or even watching online. So that we're going to keep asking and we're going to keep asking. And next year I'll stand up here in year 19. Year after that I'll stand up in year 20. And we're going to continue to ask maybe some of you were on the other side of this giving maybe some of you have met people who are on the other side of this giving they won't thank you, they won't know you but he will so the team's going to lead us in a song I thank you for your time we've got a great family time after this where we can talk, we can chat get hold of these booklets and, and really enjoy them and use them and inform yourself during this song at any point in time you'd like to come and drop this slip into the bucket or the basket please do the box at the back we're going to be writing to our entire church we're going to be sending them this message as a link to YouTube come let's give let's sing